morning, good afternoon, everyone from wherever you're tuned in from. I know we have people who are out of East Africa, so it is 8 p.m. for us. And uh, welcome to this webinar. We are so excited to have you, and it's an honor that you are tuning in. We do this every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Kindly follow Atara Solutions uh, social media pages for an update on what we'll be handling as time goes by. We are doing this in conjunction with the Lego Academy. They are hosting us and they're doing most of the IT work that we have no idea how to go about. <laughs> so over the last couple of years, we have come across the question, I will speak like a Kenyan. Now what Biashara do I start? And, and it's like a disease, it's everywhere. It's like um, everyone suffers from this question, even I myself. At some point I wondered, what do I go to, into? So, and COVID uh, pandemic has not made this question any, I think it, is, it has increased the search or the need to actually create uh, avenues for more income. It has also created the need for finding solutions to job insecurity and also the un unemployment rates in Kenya. So we have seen the need and one of the reasons that people fail in business is because of lack of knowledge. And this is proven. I will come with the data next week. I forgot to bring my book. <laughs> that people don't have knowledge on what businesses to go into or even how to run a business. And that is how Get It Right with Atara Solutions was born. I am so excited today because of our three panelists. They are people who are dear to me. And they have, I think I have learned so much from them. And I'm so excited that they get to take this uh, opportunity and take us through answering some of the questions that we've been having. Please tune in to previously, last week we had uh, someone who was teaching us on the legal requirements of starting a business. We also learned about brand management and a bit on communication. So today we are answering the question, how do I know which business to start? Luckily for us, as you'll hear the ladies introduce themselves, they do their businesses online. So we will also get to hear the bits and uh, some bits about online selling. So I allow me to let the, the panelists introduce themselves. Uh, please, George, over to you. Yes. Um, uh, hello, everybody. From wherever you're tuned in, uh, thank you, Grace, for this opportunity. My name is uh, George Kagoru. Um, I'm a, hus I'm a son, I'm a husband and a father, and, and um, I'm delighted to be here. Um, yes, I think that is it for now, Grace. Okay, JC? Yeah. A brief introduction? Oh, my name is JC. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am a lawyer of the advocate of um, the High Court of Kenya but I don't practice uh, at the moment. Uh, right now I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a mother and a wife, an educator and a writer. Wow, excellent, Shiko. <laughs> My name is Shiko Shikuku. I am a formulator. A formulator is somebody who plays around with different ingredients to create, in my case, oils for the hair and um, skin. I am also a mother of four. I am a wife. I am a sister and a daughter and a friend to all of you. Nice to see you all here and welcome to this session. <laughs> thank you, thank you, our panelists. It's an honor to have you. I know you guys have been in business for quite a long time. Most of you have actually been in it longer than I have. So George, how do I yes. know which business to start? Okay, thank you, thank you, Grace. Um, once again, uh, maybe before, I, be, be, as as I continue, um, maybe I could say what I do. I'm actually an entrepreneur who loves empowering through leadership. Um, I love leadership. I love empowerment. Um, apart from that, I I run. Uh, I've been in business for the last fifteen years. So. Um, I run currently BSI, which is a technology a te a telecommunication company, and also Mastrental, which is a tower rental company, and 
recently, um, you know, last couple of years, I've been also been involved in media. So I, I run uh, actually a radio station. And last but not least, I've been involved in uh, real estate. So I love construction also. So those are the different facets. Um, just to give a bit background of myself, um, my education, I mean, I have an undergrad in entrepreneurship, which I loved doing, and uh, an MBA in strategic management. So Grace, um, how do, how, we're attempting today, I mean, um, I'm coming in, and what I'll be bringing in um, today is just the last 15 years, what I've built, uh, what I've learned about business. And th that is really what I'll be sharing with you today. Grace asked a very interesting question. How, what, how, how, you know, what business do I start? Which business do I, do I start with? And um, before, I, before I get into that, uh, just a quick, a quick uh, you know, story about um, several years ago, I, I, was, I was, I think in Form 2, um, found myself in a, in a dormitory and we were a couple of, uh, of students there. I think we had come from a weekend. And after of the weekend, of course, it was a boarding school with boys. So basically what happened is, when, when, typically when you go out, what we used to come with is, is, is a loaf of bread. I think loaf of bread for those who have been in boarding school has been a, was a precious commodity. So what I remember is on, on a Monday, I think on a Monday or, or, or in between the week, some of my friends coming in and telling me, oh, by the way, um, can we share, can we have a piece of, of your bread? And this was really interesting because, of course, I was a bit reluctant because bread was precious. But the next thing somebody told me, one of, one of, my, one of the boys is, okay, fine, I'm willing to pay for it. So out of that, actually, I ended up selling a few slices of bread for a whole, uh, pri for a whole price of bread. And out of that was born a, a business opportunity, which I, I remember took me through most of, uh, most of high school. So why am I saying this story? It's, it's just for me a, a recollection of how, how those business idea or how entrepreneurship skills were there even at 15 years old. Why, why am I saying this is, then I didn't even have the, the knowledge I have, but I, at least I understood the basic principles of business in the sense that I, when I buy something, I need to sell it at a profit or, or at least I need to get, make enough money to buy another loaf of bread. So having said that, maybe let me go back to the question. Um, which business do I start? Now, I, I, I'm sorry to say, but and I think I'll disappoint a few of you because I feel this question has, has been answered. If you go to, I mean, if you Google and all that stuff. So I'm gonna share from my perspective, which business do I start? And the, prob the problem I see uh, uh, um, about that is, is, um, I mean, the problem is, is not, is, is what I've seen over the years is business is not about you. I'm, I'm sorry to say, many people go into business thinking business is about me. Business is about uh, George going into business and making lots of money and buying all the nice cars and having a good life and all that stuff. Or even now, there is COVID. So maybe you're finding yourself out of a job and you're thinking, man, what business should I start? And that thing is really stressing you and you're wondering, how do I even start it? Where do I even begin? So I'm, I'm sorry to say, business is really not about you. And the thing is, uh, what I've seen is successful businesses in the long run are those that are run not, not because you're fulfilling your needs, but others. So that is where you find your fulfillment. Because if you start a business now, and all you care about is making money. Yes, you might make money down the line, and then what? So you have no other, you have nothing else. You've already achieved your goal. So really, to disappoint you, business, I would say, is, is not about you. So um, maybe um, the question that you should be asking is, um, what, you know, then why go, into, why go into business? In fact, when, I, when that question is asked by Grace, I always say, ask yourself why, why do I want to go into business? I find why a better question to ask because it's a creative question. It, the, the earlier question, why, why should I go into business tends to stress you up. Okay, at least it stresses me up. I, I, I feel like, you know, I, 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 have to, I have to start thinking and, you know, uh, it's, it's more, I feel it's more negative. So I, I rather approach it from the point of, 
why? I always answer the question why. Why do I want to, to go into a certain business? And I think through the, through the process of asking why yourself, then it's more of a creative question to me. It opens up, it doesn't put me in a box. And there I'm able to process it further. But also, the, what I've come to notice uh, over, over the years is, is that when you're starting a business, it's all about solving a problem. I think this is something uh, it took me a while to, to understand also, but great businesses are centered around solving a certain problem. And I mean, if I, if I look at Grace, I've known Grace for, for, for a while, and I, I know that her passion in, in what she does in HR, what drives her is solving issues that people have, HR issues. Uh, if we if we go back to to my to 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 one of one of the businesses that I ran, Mass Rental, which came a few years after, the issue that came up for me is I I used to have, okay BSI runs is a telecom com company. What we do is uh, sell solutions, integration solutions to media houses. This is it's basically a, tele a technology company. But what used to happen in the process? Clients used to come to me, and after we've sold them the equipment, they have to go to another customer to negotiate uh, a different contract. And I could see that they were, they were frustrated. So the question there was, I saw the why, and I saw the, the, the problem that you were facing. And out of that mass rental, which is a tower rental company came, because now we could not only give the clients a solution, a, a, a one solution, but sort of give them a, 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 a turnkey solution. So again, I stress the, the reason why, and I think after the why, it, 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 it answers all the other questions, where, the how, and, and all those other, other things that, that, that can come in. So your idea, again, I say, I, I insist, it should be centered around the problem that you want to solve, or the need that you want to meet. Then, I, then after that, the money is a reward. I believe money is a reward for you meeting that, that solution, or for you meeting that need. So um, I've shared, so, Having said that, I, I don't just want to, 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 to leave people like that. I, I thought of going a different uh, route of, so what, what are the sources of, of business ideas? Because we all have ideas. And I, I think here, I, I needed to stress, we all have ideas. I, ideas is what runs in our minds and all that. But we need to differentiate that with a business opportunity. Those are two very different things. And an opportunity, basically, is 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 uh because ideas everybody will have ideas but you need to sit down and qualify go through a method of qualifying your ideas so that then you see which out of these ideas which is actually an opportunity and an opportunity is simply um um a, an a, a, an an attractive idea in fact let me use the two kinds of ideas that uh, an attractive idea and an unattractive idea and an attractive idea is one that basically you cannot pursue or you cannot monetize or you cannot have a return on investment but an attractive idea is one that you can monetize, is one that solves a problem. Okay, so of course it solves a problem, but also it's able to have a return on investment. So the, the, uh, so what are the sources of, of these business ideas? So one of the things that, that I saw, and that's where I started, is, uh, is personal skills and experiences. Um, I, could, I, I could talk about myself because, um, my businesses are centered around my skills. I also have an, a, a, an IT background. So one of it, one BSI is actually a technology company and it runs through, I'm able to harness those skills. And experiences, I, different experiences uh, could be your source of business ideas. You could be out on a job and uh, out of, because of COVID um, this particular season. And I would say that the skills that you have, if you look, closely, that is where your business idea is. And you can actually use that to come up with a business idea. The other thing that um, some of us have used is, is hobbies and interests. Um, I have an example of somebody that I know. Um, they just had, I mean, they did IT, but they, their hobby was actually baking. So what basically happened is they started baking uh, as a hobby. And before they knew it, they realized, oh, by the way, actually, let me, this baking thing, they started getting orders. So before they knew it, um, that hobby became a business. And what is, the beauty about it is that 
Then they use the IT skills to come up with the systems for the business. And now it's a successful uh, pastry, it's a, it's a successful pastry shop. So uh, selling cakes all over. Um, so hobbies and interests could be a source of your business ideas. The other one, which I love, I've loved over the years is exhibitions. Uh, people take for granted, but don't just, you know, people go to exhibitions for different reasons. You actually go to exhibition to buy stuff, but I'm thinking, no, there is much more to exhibition <laughs> than just going to spend your money. It's actually uh, an interesting business, um, um, an interesting place to come up with a business idea. I, I, have, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've been lucky and I've traveled, and the part of the reason why I travel is this ex through these exhibitions, you are able to tap into suppliers. You're able to tap into ideas that are coming up. And you're able to even meet people who are ready to, you know, maybe come up with agreements that you sell their products here. So that's another source of, uh, of business ideas. Another one maybe is franchises, which um, are, coming, are coming all over. It's much easier to run a franchise that maybe start your own. It depends on which level you're thinking. The other uh, place that I saw was in mass media. And mass media here, I'm talking about newspapers. Don't just read newspapers. Don't just read the, the you know, the fun, the funny part. But I mean, the, the fun part. Look, go critically and, and look at a newspaper. And I'm sure by, by the time you're done, you can actually see something that might be a business idea. And magazines and, of course, television. Television has always been looked at as a source of um, entertainment. But it's actually a source of business ideas. And the internet is another place. Um, but the other place I loved, um, and, and this is, I, I, I wish we had an opportunity to ask a, a question in, in terms of a survey form. Because I will ask, um, for you logged in, most of you most likely, I, I don't want to assume, but I was talking to my panelists and most of them have tried two, three, four, five, six businesses before. I have I've also been the same. Some have actually worked, some have actually failed. And I, when I saw this option of business ideas through surveys was actually something that I've picked in the past. You, you actually use survey forms as ways to figure out uh, needs of your customers, to figure out gaps a, in a certain market. I, will, I, I mean, people, um, people talk about if there's a line of, of kiosks and you want to start yours, don't just go blindly the, the Kenyan style, the way we do it. I mean, uh, like now the latest one, I think after COVID is masks and everybody went and, and, and bought masks. But the issue is, did you do a survey? Did you, did you come up with something to, 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 to help you with, uh, with that business idea? So let's not go into business blindly. Maybe the, the other one, which is, a, which is a source of business ideas is, is complaints. Uh, what, what frustrates you? What can you do differently? That, that's a, a good source of ideas. And then change, we're in an environment that is changing. COVID, by the way, has been an opportunity for our business. By the way, part of what we are doing, um, and I'm sure most of us maybe go to church and stuff, you know that most churches right now are locked out. So everybody's looking for streaming solutions. So part of an opportunity for us that came up out of COVID is really to offer streaming uh, software, uh, uh, streaming products. And with, with just one or two products, you can easily stream uh, your service, including streaming from anywhere that you can. So that is an opportunity that for us came as a result of change uh, through COVID. And the other, the other one I would say is brainstorming. I mean, they, I could go on and on and on about, about, um, about the sources of, of ideas. Um, so, I, I mean, having, ha having said that, um, you need to be able to identify and recognize business opportunities. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm losing a bit of my, of my notes here. Um, why, 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 I, why I felt it's good to also give you um, those, those opportunities is because after that, you need to qualify them into, into an opportunity that can be able to work for you. So, Going back to um, going back to uh, characteristics of a, of a good business opportunity, I mean, once you verify those opportunities, there there are those things that you need to be able to look look uh, look into. And I thought, uh, let me give you a few pointers on that. And one of the good uh, one of the beauty about some of these opportunities is that one is able to create 
a real demand. What, I, what, I, what do I mean by a real demand? A real demand is uh, for the product or service that I'm selling, for the people I'm trying to reach out, are they willing? But most importantly, are they able to afford that? So that is what I mean by real demand. But also that opportunity, is it able to give you a return on your investment? As I said, you're trying to solve a problem, but you know, at the end of the day, it's gonna cost you. So what you need to ask yourself then is, is it going to give you a return? As, 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 is it going to give you a profit on, on that as you're solving the problem? Otherwise, you, you will actually end up uh, closing shop. But also, the, uh, that, that opportunity that you have, is it competitive? Are you able to offer it at a competitive price based, uh, compared to your, to your competitors? But also the other thing, is it meeting the objectives at which you stand? You remember we talked about a business is solving a problem. Is it meeting those objectives? Is it meeting the objectives of the people that you're trying to reach? Otherwise, you'll end up not having a, a, a viable, a, a viable uh, opportunity. But also the last one is uh, availability of resources and skills. This opportunity that you have, do you have the skills or do you need to get the skills? Because you, you might as well um, be have a good opportunity, but are you able to get the, the, the resources, be it raw materials, be it the people? So those are some of the pointers that I thought I'd would, I would, I would bring out on the characteristics of a good opportunity. Again, uh, time does not allow me to explore this uh, topic out, but I thought in summary, um, by going to answer the question, what business, or what business should I start? Always ask yourself, why am I going into this business? But also ask yourself, what problem am I trying to solve? Then that way, it will make it easier for you. Even when you're, even when you're, if, and it, by the, it gives you the motivation, it gives you the momentum. It, it actually gives you, um, it motivates you to, 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 to soldier on because business is not easy. It has its own ups and downs. So in summary, what I'm saying is, uh, is, is also that you have many ideas. You've got to qualify the ideas. You've got to make sure that what you have is an opportunity. And lastly, but not least, have people around you who challenge you. By the way, somebody said that why your ideas sound best is because they are, only, they are your own ideas. So <laughs> they will always sound like the best ideas, but have people around you who challenge you. Have people around you who hold you accountable and we're able to give you sound advice. Thank you very much. I, thank you very much, George. I think we can quickly, I know time is not on our side, I, we can quickly take a question that regards to that. Someone is asking, George, you are in, too, in, in a lot of, um, a lot of uh, endeavors. How do you balance your time? Uh, wow, how do I balance my time? You know, one yeah. of the reasons I did, that's why I love leadership, because leadership has taught me that uh, I, I need people. I, um, uh, so one of the reasons why I manage is because I mentor people, I empower people, and so I'm able to balance all that without, without affecting even, if, for example, my family, because I need to, I need to find a, a work-life balance. So again, leadership, that's why leadership for me is key, and that's a topic for another day. You need people, because as John Maxwell has said, one is such a small number to achieve any greatness. Yeah, so that's, that's how I do it. Yes, and I must say I'm your, one of your people. <laughs> Yes, and Grace is one of my people. She yes. helps me with the HR, yes. Yes, and then uh, someone else is asking, entrepreneurship is inborn, true or false? Sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. As, 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 you, <laughs> as you breathe. <laughs> Uh, so, um, there's, uh, someone else is asking, hi, George, do you identify customer segment and how do you design a value proposition for that segment? Alan, let me answer you that on the 14th of this month, we are going to have, uh, the topic will be, how do, uh, what do customers want? And we are going to answer that question on that particular day. We may probably touch on it today, but on 14th, please join us. We are going to be discussing what do customers want? And I think that is the time we'll answer that. George, are entrepreneurs okay, yeah. let me, let me born add, or... Yeah, let, let me answer that one. Entrepreneurship is a born or, 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 I don't know. True or false, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, uh, I wish I, that's, a to, that's a great topic. 
but I think it's both. Uh, it's both. You're in, it's okay. inborn, but you also you, you also learn because I'm also. He's I mean, also asking. Yes. Let me just complete the question. Would you say yeah. you succeeded because you were born an entrepreneur or you took entrepreneurship in school or none of the above? Well, again, I say it's both because uh, there's that that I had, which I explained uh, when I look back, but also over the years I have learned that. And that's why these things I did later, by the way, I had nothing because I realized at some point what I like about uh, also being taught is it helps you organize your thoughts. It helps you organize the knowledge that you have so that you become better. Being a student of strategy has helped me understand about value proposition, many things. You've got to be strategic in what you're doing to be able to be competitive. And again, so, so ideally it's, it's again, it's both, yes. Okay, um, okay so, so finally, you. so that we can let the ladies speak. We have, uh, congratulations, George Cyrus is asking, maybe you can tell us how or when do you know when to open a second business after the first one? Well, um, that, that, is, that is aligned with the issue of opportunity because you know what, there's, a, there's an aspect of opportunity we didn't talk about. There is always what we call a window of opportunity and, that, and that's a big thing because what I've learned even with, with the mass rental, if I was to use mass rental for example, it was a window of opportunity. If I missed that opportunity, then I've missed it. Uh, so that again, that question, you can't really have a blanket answer, but I would say is always right on the opportunity. If the opportunity is there, then, then, then do it. Because business is about opportunity. That's what, that's what I feel. And that, has, that is what has played uh, for me in the past. Yes. Over to you, Grace. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think someone else was also asking uh, how you went to expand. I think we are going to tackle that in, in a few weeks as we discuss how to run a business because those will be now facets after you have started a business, then you can expand into more business. We are going to bring speakers on that. Uh, I think we can have Shiko. Shiko, please, over to you. Thank you, Nzula. So our topic today I want to say that my business, I have two businesses, by the way, but I think what is relevant to this discussion is Shishi Naturals. The other one has been overtaken by COVID. So um, let me not talk about that one. So Shishi Naturals was born out of a need for my then infant son to resolve a case of recurrent eczema. So eczema is a skin condition that makes the skin extremely dry, becomes flaky, and for a little baby, it's, it, is such, it is such a drug. So we knew we were not going to use steroid creams for the rest of his life, so we needed to, to look for a solution. And a friend of ours <laughs> called Njahira suggested that we, I try nut, natural nut oils. This is some eight years ago. So at the time, I didn't know what that was. So she directed me to a supplier in Uganda where I bought my first batch, mixed it up, and I did not like the scent at all. And it was also, it wasn't good. The people I shared with then who are my customers now cannot believe how far we've come. We, we were playing some really bad smelling thing, but it was working well for the skin. So out of that, my, my love for formulation was born because I wanted to find out how can I make these oils smell better? Like, okay, for the adults, you would apply because now this became a family thing. You would apply and then you know you can put on some perfume. And I used to share with my friends. So I did the sharing and the mixing in my kitchen for five years. It was not a business then. I was just doing it at home. Then some three years ago, I needed to get into, I needed something income generating. And I thought, uh, what, what, what do I know? What do I have that I can use? That's how, okay, I had two ideas. I wanted to get in the food business, catering, maybe baking, just because I love them. But I'm not perfect in either of them. Then I thought the formulation thing 
the mixing of the oils was much, made much more sense to me. I would do it in my kitchen effortlessly and I would advertise online. So that is how I began my business. So as uh, time went on, I made my first order, which was about less than 4,000 shillings. I mixed the oils, I packaged them. So the big thing was now selling. Um, uh, let me backtrack and say before that, I had a fish and seafood business online and I'd experienced a bit of cyberbullying. So getting into this, I didn't know. I didn't have the, let me say, I didn't have the confidence to advertise online. I remember telling JC, um, maybe she could help me by advertising on her platform because I didn't want to show that this is my product. And she told me, no, just go ahead, just do it. Whoever buys, buys, and with time, you get used to it. So it took a while, it took, I think, between me asking her and doing it probably took a whole two weeks. And then now I made my first post and the response was good on the post, but not in the sales. So that was a bit disheartening, but I went on in uh, probably two weeks into it. Again, people started ordering and I made a few mistakes here and there with the, you know, big orders and the branding and packaging, but by and by the business grew. So I started with one product, did it for a good year. And at some point where I was struggling with uh, some health problems and uh, a very delicate pregnancy, I actually stopped doing the business. And I thought I was done. Anyone who would call and ask for the products, I'd say I'm no longer in business or I'm taking a break. And then I realized like after two months, the inquiries were too many. So I thought maybe this is just my thing. So I went back. But while I went back, I realized now I was overwhelmed. I have um, little babies at home. I'm pregnant. I needed to find a way to continue doing my business without really feeling the strain. And at this point, as much as the timing was not great health-wise for me, I needed to grow. So that's where the idea of manufacturing came in. And just as I was thinking about that, online as I was browsing stuff, I came across a manufacturer who was doing manufacturing for startups. So that's how I got into my first experience of manufacturing. Someone did it, a company did it for me. And it was a great experience, but I quickly realized that I already had a passion for formulation. So now I say I have restless hands. I was not doing anything with my hands and I was feeling like I am being useless to my business. So another idea was born out of that, that I could now probably just do this on my own, but on a bigger scale. And I would say I'm still, I'm doing it, but it's not perfect. I'm trying to set up a business, trying to set up a, a factory in Kenya, the legal requirements, the licensing and all that, it is a headache, I will not lie to you. I have made very many mistakes. Financially, I can't even afford it. But I have found people who are passionate. I have found devised ways of uh, butter trading, some experiences with someone else who has a set of experience um, that I do not have. And I would say right now, it's, let me call it a team that I'm working with on different levels, production, um, something as um, what, like if I need design or photography, I have a number of people surrounding me that I know I can go to, to do that. So now where I am right now in my business, like I said, it was born out of need to heal eczema. Uh, I've gotten into the growth phase, which I think will be there for quite some time because there's so much to do. But out of online selling and being on Facebook especially, uh, customer feedback has helped a lot in the growth because a customer will ask for something you don't have. Then by the time you're doing five customers who are asking, then you have to ask yourself, can I really do this? Then you get, you get into the research, 
and then you formulate something. So out of customer feedback, I have formulated new products. Out of customer feedback, I am getting into export because someone is ready to stock about three of the products in their shop in the US. So I am doing now the necessary requirements, the licensing and all that to do that right. Uh, so online has been a mixture of good and bad, but mostly good. Good, like when you're doing deliveries and you go, somebody does not pick up their phone and you already sent a rider or a messenger, stuff like that. Or you get this, someone did not like something they bought and they decide to just go and do a really negative post about it. I mean, we are open to feedback, but I think you can give feedback in a way that will not bring down a brand. And sometimes you don't get the gravity of this until when you're in business and realize two, three comments can bring down a brand, especially when you're starting off. The feedback is great, yes, even the negative one. Trust me, I have done big blunders in business, but I guess the way it is um, given really matters and helps. And, and without feedback, actually, you cannot even grow. So it is very welcome, but it, it is also like important to give it in the right way. So the online space is, is many things. It is um, like I have met very good people um, in terms of business. People who are in my line of business who are doing better than me, it helps that you interact with them. People who are not in my line of business also, I have learned so much from them. I have learned some intricate details of formulations from online. There are schools uh, online who teach everything and you can learn either business or whatever it is that you do, there's somebody else doing it. So the online space is very, very like, it's, it's, it's like an encyclopedia of everything. So that has been very useful for me. Um, so I think to get back to, I hope I have answered the question exhaustively, um, Zula. So to, to, to get back to what, why, how did I start? What, when, why, what, how did I know what business to do? <laughs> so this particular one was because of a need, how but I have had. Know what, yes, yes, what business to yes, start, yes. Yes, so this one was a personal lead, but I knew there are other people who were as needy as I was, who needed good, you know, to treat the eczema and also to have good skin. And I mean, we have grown uh, strength from one strength to the, <laughs> to the next. So online, I'm, 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 I'm uh, on Facebook <laughs> and, and Instagram. It's, uh, you can follow me. It's uh, at Shishi Naturals. And um, at the same time now, because we are able to produce volumes, so we are now dealing with uh, wholesale clients. Or if you want to start your own brand, now I can confidently say, you can call me for a consultation and I can help you with that. If you want to get into manufacturing, you can talk to me. And yes, that's just about it, about um, Shishi Naturals. Any questions? Over to you, Nzula. Okay, uh, okay. Someone was asking. Yes. Like, how do you not give up? After you have tried so many things, how do you not give up? <laughs> I think um, there's got to be a bit of passion. Okay, in, 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 this, in this business or in other business. Okay, let me talk about this particular business. I think there's got to be passion. Passion keeps you going. Passion keeps you going when you're making like, do you know there, there, there's a time, and JC knows this story, you go for 10 days without selling anything. And then there are days where you, it's such a good business day, you have to pinch yourself and ask you, wow, did I make all this money today? You know, so when things are really tough, I think passion keeps you going. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 George, I think you can uh, have this and probably you can answer later. Someone is asking the books that George can recommend for reading. And then JC, we will be with you in a minute, but someone is asking, Shishi, kindly mm -hmm. let us know how you got your first customer. That is tough for me. <laughs> People have trust issues if one is just starting out. 
I think your first customer is probably a friend. And that friend, let me give a good example. And, and we, we've met JC, for example, is my friend who has used my product and knew it. Maybe I'm lucky that I had a friend like JC because she did a whole review of the one product that I was selling. So out of that, I guess social capital is good. Other people uh, who did not know who I was previously knew who I was and now wanted to try this product. And it goes on and on. But the, the, the biggest, um, most of my business has come from strangers. But yeah, that's how I would answer that. Okay. And I think I can answer that. Uh, um, her name is S. S, I think for you, it's out there. Someone will trust you. Attend events. I know there is COVID. Mix with yeah. people online, join groups, mm -hmm. and put it out there. I can tell you for a fact, someone will trust you with it. Now, uh, JC, because we are eating into your time. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's my turn. <laughs> yes. I wish I was as organized as the other panelists. <laughs> I really wish. But for me, I, I kind of fell into business. That was not my plan. Um, this was in the year 2012. I had just had my baby. I had two jobs, but uh, both jobs refused to pay me maternity leave. I had just uh, given birth by a CS. My father had just died, so I was in a really bad space. And then I had to go back to work like one month later. And then when I went back to work, both jobs would not pay regularly. So they would pay sporadically for me. And I had to find a way to find um, food and find milk for my baby and find diapers. And um, I was in this fitness group and we would share our fitness journeys because um, just like right now I have just given birth. Right then I had just given birth. So I was heavy like I have now. So I was trying to lose weight and all these people are trying to lose weight. And I used to work out at home with DVDs. And a lot of people did not know you could work out at home. So I used to go to these movie shops and get the, the workout DVDs from them and then add a small markup and then resell it. That's how I started. Like it, it just started like a joke. So somebody said, Jesse, you just get for me this DVD you're talking about. So I went to the movie shop, had them copy for me, and then I, I delivered to them. So um, over like a period of like a month after that, all my lunch times were dedicated to delivering these uh, DVDs. And then after work, uh, we'd leave work at five. So from five to 6.30, I'd be in town delivering uh, these DVDs. And uh, like within a span of, I'd say like six months, it, it really peaked to the extent that this small DVD monies could pay a few bills. And then I saw, okay, this is a business opportunity. So I, I started doing more of that. Um, and then it reached a point, I was just fed up with my two jobs and their sporadic payments. So I said, uh, let me go home and, and look for other jobs. And then I looked and I looked and I looked and I never found what I wanted. And so I decided, okay, uh, this thing is bringing me money. Uh, let me focus on it. So I got somebody to do the deliveries for me. So my work was just to get the stock and then advertise, and then this person would deliver. And that is how my fitness business was born. And then um, I did that for a while. And then I noticed, okay, for these uh, workouts that people are doing, you need equipment. So before I'd, I'll tell them, oh, so you go to this place and get this equipment. So and then I started wondering, why am I doing free business for these people? So I figured out how to import the equipment. So now I moved to importation, so I would import the, the fitness equipment. So now it uh, became like a, a, a fully fledged uh, business. And then following that, I fell into the natural hair movement. I joined this group that will talk about natural hair and natural hair care. And then we'd also talk about skin care. And then, you know, the way you use things, and then people tell you, what have you used? Where have you gotten it from? Then you tell them, go get there. Then you wonder, why are you giving this person free business? <laughs> and then I started now dealing in the hair care and skin care. So now I deal with fitness 
I deal with hair care and I deal with skin care. So those are my businesses. Um, now, like uh, George had said, it's really about um, looking at who needs your product. For me, I would say that is the first step of business. Don't just start a business because you saw somebody else has started the same business and they're making money. You never know what is uh, going on behind there. So you look for the gap in the, you know, like people need this, it's not being provided. Can I provide it? Do I know where to get the product? Do I have the knowledge? If I don't have the knowledge, can I get the knowledge? There are a lot of businesses that I could have started, but uh, I realized I don't know the, I, 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 I can't, like I, I don't know the knowledge behind it. So I am not able to fulfill my customers. Um, so for me, my businesses are mostly online, a lot, a lot based on Facebook and a lot of referrals. And uh, the benefits for me have been uh, that one-on-one -on -one connection with the customer. So I get to talk to customers and they tell me what they need. And by there, what, what they tell me is normally what leads me to my next business. I don't just open businesses for the sake because you, you hear this person wants this and maybe it's not available or it's not uh, available um, in a cost effective manner. And I see, okay, this is a gap I can feel. So I start that. Um, the negatives, <laughs> the negatives are a lot by the way. Uh, when you're starting a business, like I said, never think that just because somebody else has started a business and is doing well, that you will also open the same business and do just as well. Whether that is a lie, <laughs> you should be able to do your own research. And I always say that the first step is to plug into a market for me personally plug into a market. Once you have plugged into a market, then you're able to know, okay, these people, they need this, this, and this. Or maybe they need this, but this is already adequately provided and in a more cost-effective manner than I could provide it. And then um, I'd say another challenge is what Vicky had talked about. People will tell you, oh, we need this, we need that. Uh, but when it comes, uh, all of a sudden, kill them to another missing. <laughs> like it has happened a lot for me. I, people tell me, "Oh, I'm booking this, I'm booking that." So I, I, I import this, and you know, when I import, I import like in big numbers because you're getting from, you know, manufacturers. So when the thing arrives, all this, the list of thousands of people you had, like barely a quarter of them will actually buy. So you need to also be very, very careful when you survey your market and that you, you, you don't like fill it with these people of I want, I want, but really either they can't afford or they really don't want. Uh, another challenge we've been going through is that thing of somebody orders and then when it's time to deliver, uh, stories. Eh, Mara, you, you are talking at midnight, at 8 a.m. the person is like, I traveled out of the country. <laughs> like, <laughs> what time did you travel? You don't know. So you need to develop systems <laughs> to cover <laughs> such kind of a situation. Um, another challenge that I have personally experienced is with employees. You really, you really need to have systems in place. Um, so that your employees are not stealing from you because, oh my God, hey, those people, they can bring you down to zero. So if you're not organized and you don't have systems, this, these people, especially when they work for you for a long time, they know exactly where to steal. So you need to be very careful about that. Um, then you also need to change with the times. For example, when I first started my first business, it was that one of selling uh, DVDs that I would get from the DVD guys. And then with time, I was able to buy machines and make for myself the DVDs and sell. But most, most of the people don't use DVDs anymore. So you need to go to like, you need to go to the next step. So for every business you do, you must be able to evolve with the time, which means don't be too rigid. Um, listen to your customers and adjust um, to their needs. And then uh, I would say if you want to sell on social media, um, for me personally, I have found that you have to sell yourself before you sell your product. So people must know you first. They must connect with you 
or rather you must find people to connect to because if if um if they don't know you they can't trust you and i'll go back to the person who asked uh, how how she got her first customer for me it was being active online and just being um, open and honest about the kind of person that i am so that i could connect to people who understand who i am and who would appreciate who i am so when the trust is there the sale is easier it's there and then uh, with time you're able to get referrals and it becomes easier to convince people but i, I would not like the first time is is really is really really mm -hmm. hard yeah and you have to be very very resilient mm. yeah i think that's all i have to say unless there are questions thank you jc i tell you i think we need another two hours for these sessions yeah. wow 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 <laughs> We have yeah. so many questions and very little time. I am seeing we have about six minutes to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, someone is asking, do you think it's important to have a website, JC? Uh, personally, I don't, though mm -hmm. I should. I must admit I should, but I have been able to survive without one because um, <laughs> I have relied a lot on my personality yes. and my followers. But I know it, it pays to have a website. But um, if you're starting out, by the way, I always, I tell my friends, including Chico, don't worry about being perfect. Start where you are. If you can't afford a website right now, let it not stop. You just start where you are. Then you can have it as you go forward. Yes. And then there's someone who was asking, how do I know this is the right uh, business to start? And I will go with what George had answered previously. He had said, make sure you have qualifiers. We will share George's presentation with everyone who has logged in uh, to your emails, and then probably you can refer again. We are saying we are doing this every Tuesday, so please join us every other Tuesday so that we can be able to answer as many questions as possible. JC, there's someone who is asking. Uh, now, because I think we have three questions on how you handle setbacks, and I think that is how, where we are going to close. I'd like to start with you, then to Shiko, and then George. How do you handle setbacks? One minute each. <laughs> oh my God, I could talk hours about set setbacks. Uh, for example, people who know me know last year I had a tragedy in my business. <laughs> my delivery person stole from me goods worth millions. And my business basically was brought to its uh, knees. But for me, giving up has never been an option. So um, I just believe that giving up is not an option. I look at my business and I see I still have customers and I, I can still get the product. So I just keep going and the loopholes that have been exposed, I seal them and just don't give up. That's what I'd say. If, if you feel you're on the right path, don't give up. Yeah. And I know this is your favorite. Do you sell on credit? <laughs> 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 not anymore. I did, but not anymore. <laughs> By the way, um, when when <laughs> when you have a business, oh my God, credit sets you back so far. Yeah. Mm. First of all, you have people um, who may even refuse to pay back, yeah. and sometimes even just the following up. You know, that's an extra cost that's not mm. even accounted for, mm. and you're not even charging interest for that. So I'd say mm. um, with credit be very careful for me i have a no credit policy <laughs> yeah very good jc thank you chico <laughs> setbacks right yes. yes so for me i will look there are so many but i think my i have learned that my biggest setbacks this year just the other day you also Mishi, she was on the papers that was a major setback Yes. But there was a blessing brewing in there. So every setback comes with a blessing. Yes. So now I have learned so much from that uh, experience. Mm. And moving forward, as I set up my own plant doing things, Yes. Um, it's been a great uh, learning experience. So with every setback, I learned something. There's an opportunity. That's what Yes, there's an opportunity. Yes. Yes, mm. yes George, how do you handle setbacks? I mean, setbacks is a part of business. I would say what I've learned is uh, put measures in place on how to mitigate them. But uh, what is also important is not to lose your focus because some of them come to, you need to, uh, you need to refocus. If, there's a, if, if you need to uh, go back into the drawing board, then do it. 
but I think uh, as, as, as most of the panelists have said, do not give up. Uh, resilience is important in business and setbacks, I would say, is part of business. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, finally, there's a question that I would like to answer for, I think this is very HR related and uh, I think you're lucky that you have a HR here. Uh, Paris Wanjiko is asking, I have a passion in human rights and have the skills to start bu a business on it, but I lack the experience to deal with some technical issues in this area and all my efforts to get a mentor on the same have been unsuccessful, therefore trans frustrating all my ability to efficiently start and run my business. Thank you for motivation to continue and restart again. Paris, I'd like to tell you one thing. Even if you're going in as an unpaid intern, it is your only opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you need patience. There's no businessman who will tell you that they don't have some, some, some God-given crazy level of patience <laughs> and perseverance. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah. one, I, I would suggest you intern with them, learn as much as you can, even if they're not paying you, your business there is to learn. So make sure you, you create the opportunity to learn. And then and, and along the way, you're going to find your mentor. You'll, you'll connect with someone who will actually teach you much more than you probably need to know. The other thing I wanted to add is George talked about qualifying uh, business opportunities. And he said that an opportunity is an attractive idea. So take all your ideas, I suggest, write them down and start qualifying them. We are going to email uh, George's presentation to everyone who registered, and probably from there you can start talking. Someone else is asking, how can I follow the panelists? I will start with myself. I'm not a panelist, I'm a host. Please follow Atara Solutions. <laughs> we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, we are on YouTube. This, uh, the webinar today will be uploaded on YouTube. So if you missed anything, you can refer there. Then with Shiko, she's at Shishi Naturals. Shishi, Shiko is spelled? Yes, Shishi, C-H-I-C-H-I, -C -H -I, Naturals with an S at the end. Yes. And my number is 071271652, but at Shishi Naturals has all my details. you find me there. Yes. JC, your social media pages? Just JC everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is everywhere. And then my number is 0721 And if you're, uh, if you're in Ronga, you can see me personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't live in Kenya this one. <laughs> I live in Ronga, where it's not Kenya. George, where do we find you? Yes. Uh, you, can, you can find me uh, uh, on Facebook at George Kagoru. That's George, then K A G O R U. Hmm. Uh, Twitter, Kagoru. I think, is, uh, yeah, I think Twitter is g.kagoru. So, yeah, <laughs> those are. Those are. <laughs> uh, someone else is asking about cash flow management. We shall discuss these things in due time. We have decided to do this every Tuesday. The one hour seems to be so short, but you're going to try as much as possible and give you as much. Uh, value as possible we please stay logged in every tuesday follow atara solutions you're going to see the next um all the topics will be posted there next week we have someone who has been running a business for 40 years and he's going to be alone so that you can ask as many questions as possible after that the next one we're going to have someone who will define for us customers and what they want i have seen someone asking how do i get my first customers yes he is going to answer what do these people want so thank you very much for joining us today i'm so sorry for the people we have not been able to answer your questions for Lenny sana we are going to take account of them and we are going to try and answer them as time goes by we are on every tuesday from 8 p.m to 9 p.m kindly follow our social media media pages to register or you can email me at grace at atarasolutions.co.ke and we are going to share the link directly to you Thank you very much and it's good night for us. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye.